Hi guys, I'm Anna Prosser Robinson. Welcome back to the stream of Annihilation. I'm here with some dragon friends as well as my co-host Kelly Link. Also, as many always. friends that likes dragons. Right. We're we could all, all be dragon friends. Yeah. Is many, that okay? In yeah. many ways, yeah. we're all dragon friends, each and every one of us. Alright, awesome. Well, I have Ben, Alex, and David here. Why don't you guys take a moment, just in case people have not met you yet, if sure. they're just joining us. Tell us who you are, what you do. Uh, it, we, are, we, are the, we are the Dragon Friends. We're an Australian uh, group. We, we, we do D&D as a live show, um, yeah. like in, in a theatre um, with an audience, which is um, which started off being very surreal, and now it's surreal to not do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the way, and part of what uh, the idea behind our show is that I played uh, Dungeons and Dragons for years at sort of university, uh, which is like Australian college. And <laughs> they, <know laughs> they have university, university. Day. Nah, they've yeah, never. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've yeah. heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was a lot of we took a lot of um, my friends who were in comedy and who had never played D and D. So this is everybody's first campaign. This is still everybody's first character. Um, that we've sort really? of really, yeah. yeah, yeah. How long yeah. have you guys been playing together? Well, now it's like three years, yeah, almost. yeah. Oh, so okay, we're That's very good. slow, so they're still only level four. <laughs> you were very bad still, yeah. yeah it's funny because the, the premise of the show always used to be like the way that Dave would announce it was like comedians that never played DD before play DD, and like. I think you pointed out like that is getting increasingly untrue because well, like we've played now two and a half campaigns, yeah, about, yeah. but we still really suck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when I've been playing for twenty years, I still suck. <laughs> <laughs> you guys never played D and D before you jumped on a stage and played D and D. We played no. twenty minutes as a test oh to yeah, yeah. Dave's house. Um, to, and to, because we thought in twenty minutes that you guys would all learn the dice, which did not work. Mm -hmm. um, and that was literally I just sort of did a little quick dungeon crawl and we were like oh you know what this is fine we they'll, got the gist of it get it <laughs> we got it because i mean like me all of us actually everybody in the in the cast is an improviser and started mm -hmm. kind of the, the first kind of foray into comedy we now all do different sort of things but but all of us are improvisers and mm -hmm. so once they've kind of explained the rules to to us we were like oh this is improv that's fine like yeah right i kind of it's a different type of sort of dorkiness but like the rules of improv and the rules of D, &D are the same you yeah. know, you know listen um, you know, advance the story. Do all the things that you guys often don't do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It's just storytelling with your friends, uh, and you have to roll a dice sometimes, and then someone tells you what that means. Tell for people who who are watching at home and maybe have played tons of Dungeons and Dragons, but have never taken an improv class. They sure. don't know anything about improv. I think that's really important. Tell us a little bit about some of the main principles of improv and how people could emulate that in their own games. It's a great idea. Yeah. Would you want me to start? Oh, you go. Sure. Yeah. It's kind of um, you know you're trying to build a story together and. There's characters who are working together to achieve something. And, yeah, it's just kind of about listening to each other and accepting offers as well. So if mm. someone says, let's do this dumb thing, then everyone goes, yay, <laughs> let's go and do it. And yeah. doing rather than thinking about it, I think yeah. is really important, mm -hmm. which we take to extremes yeah. of, like, don't plan, just just act. So, yeah. so we don't know anything before the campaign starts, but mm -hmm. we all know that we'll all get each other through it. And the other really nice thing is just doing things in your character. So you just uh, get out of your own head and you just mm. get into your character's right. head. And, that's and, the and that makes and just, decisions and a lot easier. Like, if you're playing an improv... So we all came from long form improv backgrounds, which is sometimes telling a story over like forty five minutes with with no cuts or whatever, just just mm. making it happen. And and there's two things. One is like if you are playing a character and you're playing a character really strong and you know that character, then you don't need to think because you're making decisions on behalf of them mm. and they all make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you don't need to think of, of being funny or being clever. You just go, what would my character do in this situation? And I think that's how you play good D and D too. Mm -hmm. Like, well, one of the things I really like having played D like I've dungeon mastered for the Dragon Friends and also for my friends. And the one of the things that's great but also makes it my job really hard is that um, th th these guys, because they're improvisers, they play their flaws more than they play their goals. Right. So <laughs> you have Michael really Hing, who's a hom homicidal maniac. Um, Alex, who is very maternal sometimes and will just sort of... Are you talking about me or...? No, Phil. I'm talking about oh, Phil. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, she kind of loves to look after tiny things but also is just extremely destructive. And, yeah, <laughs> with the, yeah, the power of a mighty orc behind her. Yeah. And Bobby, who sort of helps keep on the rails, and Baston, who just becomes a little self-obsessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I do, um, a, a, along with Eden, I do the NPCs. So, oh. so, uh, and, and that's a, that's an interesting one because often the, the fun of the show, because it's a live show, and because people are there to kind of see it unfold and fall apart, is sort of derailing stuff and, and making Dave's job as hard as possible. But sometimes when you're playing NPCs and say that me and Dave, have, have, it's one of the one of the weeks where we've sat down and worked out the story together. You as an NPC kind of also 
are, are pushing things in Dave's favour a little bit. Yeah, okay. and I get that help. And yeah, that's also the interesting thing with us is yeah, we have an NPC, dedicated NPC person, and like e- an assistant DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's a nice, nice way of putting it. Yeah. yeah, and um, so, and sometimes like we'll have dinner beforehand, and I'll talk about some of the ideas of, that I've got, and then Ben adds some of his to the pot. Eden also, who plays Baston, um, sometimes does secondary NPCs for us, um, which is really tricky because we have to limit what we can tell him. Of course. So there's, we sometimes will say things like, "Oh, have you got a bit of a Cockney character?" Yes. Why? What it's about? No, don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't think so. <laughs> also, like yeah, because see, the secondary NPC thing is fun because as you'll know, like. So often in D&D, there's two of something. So there'll be like two guards or, you know what I mean? Like, like so I'll start doing one of them and Eden will just jump in and we'll bounce and oh, then cool. the gameplay will continue. So, well, like, good cop, bad cop? Yeah, a lot of that. Good NPC, bad well, <laughs> We had one riff in our, like, it was like in the finale for our Ravenloft campaign, which really just dragged the energy right down. Really just, yeah, oh, you, no. you really took it away funny. from me. <laughs> it was just two bats. Um, hanging upside down, completely irrelevant to the story, just gossiping back and forth. And it went for about ten minutes. Yeah. Like, it did. I remember. It went for a long it time. It's so fun when we, get, when we get derailed like that. Yeah, I think. exactly. And I, I wanted to ask, because we're talking about you guys doing D&D in a theatre and how that's, that's your status quo, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so now you're here. There's no studio audience. You yes. don't get kind of that, like, the feedback, of the auditory feedback. Yeah. And I was thinking how strange that is for those of us who play D&D mostly as streamers. We're not used to having auditory feedback. Mm-hmm. So even a laugh here is very strange. Yeah. And then thinking about the, the, the general way of playing Dungeons & Dragons, which is I'm a group of people, I'm in my home, it's just Comfortable. us playing. I'm in my jammies. Yeah. You learn yeah. terrible habits. Like yeah. doing it with a live audience trains you to do to play D&D in a very bad way. Oh. It's kind of how like so? we were talking uh, with Kurt before he was doing the stream. And it was like the difference between doing theatre and film, mm. really. Yeah. 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 It also, it's really, it's in some ways, it's really forgiving because there's a great joy when you've got an audience there and you go on a digression. You can go, oh no, this has legs. This isn't up irritating right. people. And then you, when they stop laughing, you're like, all right, let's get back to the right. story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's like, like, it's another improv principle, which like we really do in Dragon Friends, which mm. is like you take an idea and you do it until it's not funny anymore. Okay. And you stretch and you stretch and you stretch and you stretch and you push. And, and then you hopefully you, stop at the right and moment. You, and, yeah, and you pull up at just the right moment. But without, without auditory feedback, you're kind of flying blind, and mm. that was that was something that I found quite stressful just before, like being like, "Is this funny? Is this still funny?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's because we're going to keep doing this adventure now on Twitch in a room, probably not with an audience. Yeah, oh. that's something that we're going to learn right. more about. So mm. that's something I'm really interested in because we're now going to go back to Sydney and become streamers at right. least for a few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys, uh, uh, although you didn't have as big of an audience here, is it more intimidating performing in front of the people that actually work and <laughs> make? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much. I feel like such a noob. I've been playing and I'm just like, there's people that have actually made the game and I'm like, oh, I, yeah. Don't, yeah. I don't know this. When you're sitting there going like, is that a D8 or a D12? Like, and Mike <laughs> yeah. Merles is looking at you like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think been... we all still have that problem. I, at least that's what I like to believe. I yeah. still... Which dice is yeah. that? Yeah, I, I still I just feel like a d4 shouldn't exist. Like whenever Dave's like roll a d4, I'm like, how could a d4 exist? Yeah. <laughs> That's a square. Yeah, <laughs> that's the square. And I'm still and, I find it. and I'm still sitting here as well. Whereas you guys, yeah, like are sitting there basically bullying me. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. And I'm just like, you're making me look bad in front of Chris Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I had genuine anxiety about doing this because I'm, I've met so many people who've who've made this thing and who've who've built it over the years and who are passionate about it and love it and like. We came to this as complete outsiders and we now have so much love and affection for this world and these people in this game, but because our show is so dumb and so <laughs> stupid, you don't want it to seem like you're being like dismissive with this thing or you're making fun of this thing because like... I don't know. I think you know. Yeah. I know what we, you mean. We have so much love for it too. Yeah, and and especially because we never change the characters. Yeah. Yeah. What's actually happening? And we get people coming up to us after the show saying, "Oh, this has made me want to start doing Dungeons and Dragons again," or oh, "I'm gonna, I stopped DMing, but now I'm gonna do it." And yeah. I think they kind of think, "Well, if these idiots can do it and have fun, yeah. then we right. can as well." And yeah. I don't know what you guys are. <laughs> well, well, yeah. well, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, D and D used to be thought of as a bunch of nerds that knew everything about the rules yeah. that would get into a dark room and they would play together. And it's more and more obvious that literally any person can play D and D. And love it. And yeah. we make also so many mistakes. And we, as I'm sure people have spotted, we simplify rules. We sort of gloss over some stuff. And we have to because we do a live show where we have to do a story in an hour, mm-hmm. which is not how I play D&D at home. Right. Yeah, it took us a long time to work out 
how to tweak combat to do it in a way that didn't take an hour. Yeah, we took initiative how order out. That? Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, so there's a few tricks that we've done. We took initiative order out. We took the minions rules from fourth edition. So most simple monsters die to one hit. Mm -hmm. um, we massively simplified some of the ways that sort of combat priority work. And we, you know, simple abstracted a lot of the complicated combat rules. Mm -hmm. So we don't have... Uh, superiority die. We don't. We have simpler builds for a lot of our characters, and we rely a lot of the DC check. But that's the joy of D and D is that mm -hmm. you can it's totally modular. You can you can do it to fit whether it's for a live show or whether it's like oh I've got five people here in my group and they're not really vibing on yeah. the whole and I'm, uh, combat thing. You can change it. It's modular. And, I'm, and I think the rules are meant to be that way. And and for me as a DM on stage or anywhere, my rule would always be. If my options are go to the rule book and make everybody wait while I look something up or say, oh, DC 15, roll, roll it, I'm always mm -hmm. going to do the latter. Yeah. I'm curious too because when you're playing a live show and your audience gets attached to characters and they want to follow a narrative, as a DM I think it's really interesting. You know, Kelly has mentioned she loves the fact that D&D &D means you're in constant peril of dying and it should be threatening like that. I where we had characters little, die. I think it's a little too forgiving. Sometimes people yeah. will play as the DM being like, oh, the, it doesn't do as much damage to you. I like it. If I make a mistake, you should kill me. And yeah. I'm on the opposite end where I'm like, I just want to write an epic about a really cool <laughs> hero that goes on forever. So I'm curious, what decisions do you make when you need to make sure that narrative continues? Oh, no, we've killed characters. We, yeah. we have. I had, they killed my brother, who was, my name was Filge, and he was a half-orc called Dilge. Yeah, we, and, um, we, were, we called him the small-town half-orc with big city dreams. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was interesting because he... And people loved him, but he... Well, he, he came died. on... Yeah, so we get our friends to guest, and mm -hmm. most of our friends are comedians, and he's this incredible comic that's just kind of st storming the world at the moment. He's doing so well, particularly in Australia. It's just and and we, um, we... So his name's Tom Walker, and we got him to do basically a walk-on. Like, we kind of wanted him to just do this character that was kind of almost a plot device, and he did it so well and so funnily and so touchingly that we kept him for, like, the rest of the series, and then we decided to kill him. And the, the no, fans... No, he, he just He just died. He died combat, saving right? you. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but yeah, but, but Dave and I were like, we decided to we let decided, him stay dead. Yeah, yeah. We, we said like, if 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 Tom chooses to, he can die. Yeah. And so we gave him an opportunity to kind of save Filge, and he took it. And our audience were like, I, really upset. Yeah, when we I ripped, appreciate that. We Man, ripped up his character sheet on stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, and, yeah. and it also just makes the story more like real. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And now we have all these. You know, we have you have his club, which you carry through the adventures. Mm -hmm. like, I think death. Increases epic storytelling, oh, yeah. Yeah. particularly, yeah. particularly if you make it stay. Yeah. So we don't. One of the things I really said, like. You better not kill me. Well, then you better keep rolling. I think <laughs> it, you, I've made you. I've taken you down to death checks. I, I will kill you if it happens. Yeah, right. I will kill you so quickly. Okay, thank you for reminding me that, David. That's, uh, <laughs> so the campaign you're playing right now. What's the setting? What are you guys doing? So we are doing um, our main campaign in our podcast. It's now season three, and we are in a world that people are familiar with. Shadowrun may find very familiar. It's um, sort of corporate mega corporations, skyscrapers, and a space needle reaching up to the heavens. And, and we set a lot of it set in Australia, which is quite fun. Um, With a bit of a Mad Max bend, yeah. But it's still fifth, fifth edition. We're doing it all in five year rules, That's and very cool. the Dragon Friends are trying to find their way home. And this is going to. We haven't explained exactly how it works, but. Uh, today started with the Dragon Friends waking up with a headache, not knowing how they got here. And in the podcast, that's going to make sense really soon because oh, okay. everything ties together. Yeah, so we'll be playing two at once. Yeah, and so as for Story of Annihilation, the last thing that just happened was they had to go uh, sort of outside of the walled, the walled city and well, have already ran into a fair, a fair bit of trouble. And they have also joined the, the tribe that was meant to be their first bear, like villains. So uh, we yeah, have... we're friends now. We're going to live there. I'm going to have to work out how that works. Yep. That's hilarious. The you job said, of a DM, right? Yeah. yeah. You said kind of two at the same time. Oh, right? I mean, Is your... Yeah. So we'll be doing the live shows still right. and the releasing And that's our podcast. podcast. And then we'll also be doing the stream. Great. So, so will like... someone need to watch both to get the whole story? No. Um, but if you, if you if watch you both, it will, it will tie together. But cool. you can also just keep listening to the podcast or the stream is standalone as well. Like we've worked out a way, I think, that That's sort of very cool. keeps it all working. It's yeah. like a dream. It's Possibly. like we all had a dream, right? I don't know. You Why? don't know, yeah. You don't, <laughs> you don't know yet. 
That's great. And it's going <laughs> no to be spoilers. on Twitch. And actually, we're in Pacific time, so this is going to sound weird, but it's going to stream on Tuesdays at 3 a.m. Pacific. Yep. That's yeah. Prime, prime time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what time is that Australia time? I think it's like 7. It's, it's in the morning in Australia. But you'll also be able to get the VODs at our website, thedragonfriends.com. And if you, that'll be like a good one-stop spot. There'll be a Tomb of Annihilation section where you can see it all. And otherwise, yeah, it'll be on the D&D. And, and I it, think it's also saying and at 10 a.m. Pacific. So I, we're I'm getting a, a broadcast. We're getting a yeah. rebroadcast because our times are so crazy. Right. Okay, cool. Right. So that's going to be a great day starting very early on the, the Wizards channel that's with right. some D&D at 10 a.m. That's great. And your premiere is undecided as of yet? Uh, no, I think it's um, the beginning of next month. Beginning of next month. That's not really a date, though. No, I think I think July 7th is the first. Right. Early July? Early July. Early July. Early July. Early July. This summer. But if, <laughs> this summer. We'll we'll join our Facebook page. Our Facebook. We'll yeah, we'll tell you on Facebook. We'll tell you on Twitter and our website. So just if you... And where is that again? What's the username? Uh, Facebook.com slash dragonfriends. Probably. Twitter.com slash dragonfriends. That's dragonfriends without any vowels. And <laughs> the website is The Dragon Friends. And the reason for that is if you want to start a D&D podcast, check if there's a popular Korean app because there oh. is. And oh, that's what I thought we were joining. No, the app. <laughs> it's not a popular Korean no, app. No, we're not the app. Oh. Yeah, you messed up. Yeah. Foiled yeah. again. Up. Who awesome. would have thought it? And just real quick, anywhere we can follow you guys personally to follow along with your improv and all the other adventures oh, you yeah. have? Oh, sure. Uh, on Twitter, I'm on Twitter a lot, Ben C. Jenkins. Mm -hmm. I'm Alex underscore C underscore Lee. Uh, you can send me an angry email at my personal email address, <laughs> David Harmon at... Yeah. No, I don't, I don't do Twitter. <laughs> okay, great. We'll watch Dragon Friends. Thank you guys so much for your time. We're going to keep playing until we have to stop. And that is not anytime soon because next we have a game DM'd by Rudy Rutenberg with some special guests. Let's tune in right now. Oh, <laughs>